an update and discussion regarding the Charter Review Committee's progress on evaluating Section 60.64, Chief of Police of the City Charter. And items, um, comments regarding items on the regular agenda may be made by the public when each item is discussed as outlined above. Applicants, proponents, and appellants are exempt from the time limit above and instead must limit their remarks to less than five minutes. So because this is a discussion and an update, I'm not sure it will be done in, um, so he doesn't, I know, just making sure he understands, we don't have to live by those numbers on this item. Thank you. Mayor, City Council, I'm Alan Gilbert, I'm here today representing the uh, Charter C Committee that you appointed for us to look at the elected versus the appointed Chief of Police. We have with us today some of our members I'd like to <coughs> Ask them to stand because they worked so hard on this. We have Billy DeWitt with us, Candy Poole, and Jeff Curry, some of our members of our committee that's worked so hard and, and have come up with a recommendation for you today. And so we would like to, uh, to give you this information. Uh, we've already told you about the time that was spent, the things that we did to investigate, to look into. Uh, we had uh, our town meetings. We did a lot of talking in the public. We got... Uh, feedback from the city's website, and uh, we looked at a lot of things. Uh, some of the things that needed to be changed that we felt that we would recommend to you is the uh, qualifications. Uh, and so for the committee recommendation that we have for you today is that right now the chief of police uh, has to be a resident for the city of San Angelo for a period of at least two years immediately prior to his election and shall possess qualifications of elector. That's the only qualifications. We worked a lot of areas looking at a lot of things to say, if we stay with an elected chief of police, what would we want to see? Or are we going to recommend the appointed? So by bringing this screen up, I think it pretty much tells you that the committee, after all the thought and all the work, is recommending to you that we keep the chief of police as an elected position at this time, but make changes to qualifications uh, in order to see that we get the chief that we believe the city of San Angelo wants. There is a lot of discussion and a lot of back and forth with the appointed versus the elected. Uh, as a person that's total was totally in favor of appointed for many many years, I have to, and I'll publicly admit that at this time, I think we need to seriously seriously consider looking at the other and going to appointed at at the pro appropriate time. We feel that at this time, the citizens of San Angelo, from the comments and the things that we've talked to them about, we feel that if we recommended. Uh, to go to a point at this time that the citizens are not in a position at this time that they feel that's what they want to do. And we don't believe that recommending to you something that we don't believe would pass is good common sense. And so we are recommending that we change the charter to require, and these are our recommendations to you all, uh, that the chief of police shall have been a continuous resident of the city of San Angelo for a period of at least six months and a resident of the state of Texas for a period of at least one year, immediately prior to the filing deadline for the election and shall possess the qualifications of electors in said city. Additionally, the chief of police shall meet or exceed the following qualifications. To be sworn and accepted unless challenged, challenges will be reviewed by the Civil Service Commission. One, they have 10 years as a sworn officer with a minimum of five years demonstrated performance in supervisory capacity, lieutenant or above in the San Angelo Police Department, and, and a, or in a similar sized agency. One, the next is to have a master's peace officer certificate from the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, or bachelor's in criminal justice, or four years of military service. Now, what we did is we took these because we know that different departments, different places, and people that are with our department, some of them may have a four-year degree, may, some of them may have a master's degree from TECO, and th they equal out. And so we did not want to stop someone from being able to run for election just because they didn't have a TECO master's, they have a bachelor's. And so we tried to make this the best we could, and including the four years of military service. 
And we also, we looked at other cities, we looked at some of their requirements that they have for appointments, and we're right on the same area as what appointments are for most cities in the state of Texas with these qualifications. So that, is, that was our recommendation for the qualifications for the chief of police. To be Can I elected. ask a question yes, on, on that issue? <clears throat> Basically because it does say that you have to have lived here a minimum of six months, right? Yes, ma'am. It would mean that qualified um, candidates would not be allowed to run for office even if they met all those other conditions because they haven't lived here, which the issue would be if you had an appointed police chief, you would have the ability for people outside our city to in fact put their name in a hat and run. Yes. And we had clear. we had those discussions, and but we did lower it down to six months instead of, and, and some of that is because if, let's say we had a, a deputy sheriff that lived outside of Tom Green County, mm -hmm. and, and but they met all these qualifications. But if they knew they wanted to run and they moved into the city for six months, then they could present themselves as eligible to run. You know that that's about as close as we can get it to having options. And of course, we have a lot, these qualifications that we gave you right here, and correct me if I'm wrong and be on the committee, I believe uh, Chief Hired's here, that we have 63 police officers in our department that meet these qualifications, somewhere in that area. So it's not that anybody's being cut out. Uh, but yes, the term, I mean, the, uh, the time of being in the city, we did cut, recommend that you cut that to six months. Okay, any other questions on that? Any other questions from council? Uh, I like the qualifications you've you put in here. Uh, one thing that folks have been concerned about is the fact that you could have an 18-year-old being the chief of police. But what you've got in uh, in your list there indicates a person at minimum would be 28 to 30 years old. I think folks have been concerned about uh, the, having a qualification that at least describes a person who has uh, lived in the world and has education that merits him being chief of police, so I like that. But the bottom line in this whole thing is, is the city is gonna to get to vote on this. Yes. And whether they go one way or the other, the city, is in the best democratic aspects, of, they are gonna have their say. Yes. So I know there's people out there that they've even accused some people of being communists. Okay, that's fine, that's their opinion. But ultimately, the majority of this town is going to decide whether it's going to be appointed or whether it's elected. Is that the bottom line? No, no. it no. isn't. I, uh, no. we're, Absolutely not. And Teresa, may, here's what it's going to be because you're not allowed to do either or. Either no. or. So that's why we're recommending to you that we stay with the elected chief with these changes in qualifications. It's a yes or no vote on what is presented yes. and what they're presenting, so if we it's pre not a choice. Yes, if we present this with this on the ballot, it's yes or no. Yeah, but the no effectively says that they don't want. The no just keeps it as elected as, as it is. is. So it'd be 18 years and two years. be 18 years. years old, yes. And you are correct. We didn't put an age in there because you cannot accomplish this and be 18 years old. Oh, you're right. You're going to be probably 20, 28 years old minimum, very minimum, if something like that. So any other questions on that part? Questions, comments? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, our other change that we're proposing is it says term of office, term of office chief Sanzo shall be for four years. We would like to... Uh, make a recommendation to the council that uh, we look at this and that along with serving for four years or until the successor is elected and qualified, unless sooner removed from office by death, resignation, or recall, to align terms of the chief of police with single member districts one, three, and five, the term of the election to be held in May of 2024 will be a term for three years with all following elections to be a term of four years. Now, to answer the question why is right now we have the chief of police set off separately and it's a separate cost to do that election. Uh, 
we spent uh, roughly $68,000 in special elections. So this would now time the chief of police race up with the council races so you don't have to spend that extra money in order to do that. So we're recommending that you do that along with the rest of our recommendation. If the chief of police ceases to be a resident of the city or is found to have violated state or federal law, they have to be, they shall be deemed to have automatically resigned from office. We do not have any provisions in our current charter that allows for if certain things happen with our chief that any type of disciplinary actions can take place. This would provide some safety to the city that if things were not to be good and they violate laws, things of this nature, that it could be a resignation from their position. Well, you say resignation, so the question mark is they choose to resign or we choose to have them resign. I mean, I think you kind of got to get specific about that. I'm going to let Teresa <laughs> talk on that yeah, point. It says it's deemed to have automatically resigned, so as soon as that finding happens, they're no longer the chief of police because they're going to be determined to have resigned their position through that action. And one of the reasons for doing this is because, let's say currently, if w there was violations, the only way to remove somebody from the police chief position would be by getting signatures on a recall. Is that correct? So there's no other option. There's a recall, or you can go to district court and you can file to have them removed from office depending upon what has occurred. Okay. Harry, did you want to make a comment? Uh, just a question here. Uh, it says, found to have violated state or federal law. Doesn't say anything about uh, city ordinances. Uh, is there a reason that that's not in there? Well, because city ordinances include things like traffic violations, and we're all Class C misdemeanors, and we don't believe that a Class C misdemeanor is high enough of a criminal charge to remove a chief of police from office. The state and federal laws that we're referring to are, of course, criminal um, statutes, penal code statutes, as well as things like sexual harassment, age discrimination, and those sorts of things that can occur that right now, if they were occurring, we'd have no ability to remove the person from office. And I think that's... That's the good de good decision to keep it that, at that point. So, and if someone has been, um, so you're saying that until they have found guilty, they would still remain in office. So they would have to go through the process of going to court, then being found guilty before the resignation would occur. Uh, yes, ma'am. We, you know, we right. we live on a standard of you're innocent until proven guilty. Just making sure everybody understands yes. we're not we, trying to. We we've yeah. got to make sure that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Correct. Now there can possibly be some uh, contact with TCO that could perhaps suspend someone's license if certain things occur. But we could go into all these different scenarios, which we have looked at a lot of these different scenarios, that TCO could actually pull their license as a certified peace officer, but then we come up with the question of, well, do they even really have to have a license to be our chief of police because it's under home rule and under city charter? And those questions all start coming out. And that's where we get into this problem of being a, an elected and the only one in the state that there's no state law that authorizes elected chief of police in the state of Texas. Just not one. So the city of San Angelo is the only city in the state of Texas that elects their police chief? Yes, ma'am. As far as we can find, and we've tried to turn over everything we can turn over. And, and as far as we can find, that's correct. There used to be, I can remember in the 70s, there was probably close to 20. But it did this, and then very quickly, they, they just all went away whenever a lot of the, the civil aspects started coming out. Lucy? I have a question. Um, what is the reason that they've kind of just dwindled down to just us being left on the board? What was the reason that they chose to go appointed? Well, we talked to we talked to several different places, and a lot of it was to get the politics out of the police department. In fact, everybody I talked to said that's the major reason is because the departments every two years or every four years became total turmoil 
whenever it came election time. And especially in the small cities when you've got 30 police officers and you've got two people running, they said it was very destructive. Yes, Tom? So, Judge, get to a question. This is maybe to Teresa, too. There's a question of legal and not legal, which is pretty defined by state law or federal law, whatever it is. But now there's, my question is, you know, there's a question of ethics here, and ethics is a gray area. You know, we have questions about if somebody did something and took something and other people have some influence over them and maybe gave them gifts or, or things or presented opportunities to them that they can take while those is not legal or illegal, to, to me, those things were unethical. Right. And, it, and so this totally removes any judgment against unethical behavior. I mean, that's strictly subjective. So correct me if I'm wrong, but if somebody was to get tickets to a concert or to find opportunities for those, that's still not breaking the law. I mean, it's still not grounds for dismissal, correct? Well, it could be breaking the law depending on the conditions that they receive those things, but until it's determined that it is breaking the law, that it would not that kind of what we consider an ethical violation and things we just don't do because we shouldn't do it would not remove them from office, no. I would go back to the, the, the state or the, the, the federal system would have to bring charges against them. It, uh, to Tom's question, if it's unethical and they brought state charges or federal charges and they were found to be guilty, then that would be grounds for automatic resignation, correct? That would be correct. And also some administrative procedures where somebody's found to have um, committed violations of sexual harassment or sexual discrimination or any kind of discrimination, age discrimination, those could also be findings. I think that if I were city attorney and this were to happen, which, you know, hope it would never happen, that I would actually want the um, Civil Service Commission to take a look at what was done to make sure that they're on board with the removal of the chief as well so that it's not this body who's doing it, but rather the Civil Service Commission who has more control over meet and confer, even though that's not, or over civil service, even though that's not, you know, something statutorily they do, it is kind of their role. Well, I mean, we're making a decision that affects people many years past we're all gone. And so my question is, you know, what do you put future councils and cities um, in fear of or just, you know, kind of worrying about how, how it happens. But to me, there's a question of, you know, as far as ethical and conflicts of interest that, you know, somebody could have two or three different other jobs, side hustles, whatever it is. And when it comes down to a point of this in future generations and elected, there's, it's a lot to manage going forward. But I just wanted to make sure the question of ethics here does not fall within what we're looking. It's legal. It's black and white finding by some administrative or judicial body. So there's no definition of what conflict of interest is? There is a definition of conflict of interest and we all are subject to that and there are certain things that you can do to violate conflict of interest laws like taking gifts and not reporting them for instance that can constitute a violation under state law. Those things would be included here but there are always those gray areas where you know I got invited to a concert and you know there are other people there and the vendor stayed with me well technically under the bribery laws that's still allowed. Um, but it's something that is discouraged and we probably shouldn't do. So those gray areas would not be covered. The only way to address those issues is through an appointed chief. This is infinitely better than what we have now where the sexual harassment, age discrimination, those things, there's nothing this body can do except maybe counsel um, the person. But it, those kinds of conditions would be allowed to remain in a police department under a chief who was engaging in those kinds of behaviors under the rules we have now. This at least gives some standard by which there has, if there's a decision made or a finding made, that that constitutes a removal. The other issue that Tom just brought up is um, secondary jobs. So in other words, um, is it perceived or is it stated that the chief of police shall be the only job that one Hold, so you, as chief of police, you could have a secondary business, you could have two or three other businesses in addition to being the chief of police? Yes, that would be allowed under these rules as they are now and as the rules as they're proposed. Yeah, and under our city, yeah. HR policies are also allowed, you know, with permission to have secondary employment as well. And, and we've got that difference because of elected official versus an appointed, so... What you can actually do, you're going to be still limited, but this is at least we have something in here now to work with uh, for this purpose. Because ethically, 
with law enforcement, they have their law enforcement ethical uh, that they have to go by. But whether or not they can, how they can act upon an elected official, it falls under the same statutories, which will be the sheriffs. But sheriffs have a state statutory. We don't have a state statutory that provides any of this for us because there's no state statute for an elected chief. Because no one has one. Just us. Yeah. Just, just us. One other uh, recommendation right quick so we can move on with this under the authority. Uh, we are clarifying that and changing it uh, from on the left where the chiefs have the exclusive control of the San Angelo Police Department and shall have the right to select, employ, discharge at will, and prescribe the salaries uh, within the monetary limits of the budget, the employees in such department. We've, we've changed that, recommend that you change that to the chief of police shall manage and operate the departments in according with local, state, and federal laws in addition to city policies. So this becomes part of our charter that they have to work under city policies. Give an example of why that's an issue well, or just, why the change is recommended. It, it just clarifies that because over here, we didn't say anything about working under the laws or doing anything. It's just they had exclusive control. We all know that we have civil service they have to work on. We adopted That's that. That's key. I think you, yes. you need to repeat that because we do have civil service. We have civil service. So that controls a large amount of things that happen in the police department. Uh, we have state laws that control. We have federal laws that control. We have certain things that control different things that the chief can or cannot do within that department. And what we're doing is just clarifying it here that chief run your department the way it needs to be run for the benefit of the city of San Angelo, but you must maintain everything that you do within the state, the federal, and within our city policies that we have within the city of San Angelo. So there's no reason to add to the, that the civil service issue. Civil service is automatically Correct. there. Just so, making sure we're clear yes, on that. I think, I think we're good with that, yes, ma'am. I think so. But the, here again, Larry, these will all have to be put over here. This is what we're, is recommended. And, of course, you as the council can change this however you want to. And whatever you come up with, this is our recommendation, yes or no. That's, that's how simple it's going to be, yes or no, yes or no. I think the committee's done an incredible job of really interacting with the public, getting comments from the public, and studying um, other cities, um, how they manage. Of course, they don't manage because they don't elect, but trying to get as much information as you can to relook at this and put it out to the public for votes. So I think you guys have done a great job. Well, well, thank you. They worked. I've told you all that before. They worked really, really hard, and, and, and they looked at it, and and they, they actually took their personal opinions and threw them out the window. They really did. And, and <coughs> they, they were very professional in how they did it, and I was very proud to be able to work with them. Right. So. Any further questions or comments for Judge Gilbert? Thank you all. Thank you. Do we need to open this up for any comment from the public at this point? So if there's anyone in the audience who would like to add comment to this, please come forward. Easy, District 5. Um, just food for thought. President of the United States has to be 35 and 14 years in the United States. That's it. And putting more stipulations on the qualified personnel, I think, just leaves room for down the, down the road. Not y'all. Maybe other city council. They put a new restriction, another new restriction. And y'all talk about not wanting to give, I guess, the authority, the exclusive authority to, for his, uh, over his department, y'all are elected and y'all have authority to do things, y'all vote, but I just think putting more restrictions, the, the public is smart enough to vet those people out and when they run, I think putting them with the rest of the elections is a good idea, so people are more in the mode and they'll look at it more but more government involved in narrowing the path and also allowing other people to come in. I, I don't know how that would work. I mean, we had the school district, people come in from outside and that didn't work out very well. But that's just food for thought. Let me 
Chair, I'd like to yes, please. clarify that um, any of the qualifications that are adopted by the um, election in the election, those could not be changed by future councils without going to another election. So you could not City add charter to those. issue. This yes. isn't a council. The, and then the second thing is that, you know, removing the exclusive control of the police department, the citizens actually did that when they elected or voted on civil service and made us a civil service city. Um, civil service covers employment, selection, discharge, promotion, I mean, vast areas of authority under the police department. So we're just cleaning up language basically there to say that um, there's not exclusive control because we've already had an election that said they didn't have it, and that's what the local, state, and federal laws, in addition to city of policies, is intended to do. Okay, thank you. You need to come forward if you're going to speak. Their authority, I was agreeing with the recommendation. I didn't know if y'all thought I was disagreeing with that. I was agreeing with that. Well, it's one of the reasons we keep bringing up the question about civil service, so people understand that civil service has a tremendous impact on what happens. Okay, further public comment, one last opportunity. Okay, seeing none, we will then, um, we don't have to take an action on this, right? So we'll move on to item B. So there is action we need to take. Well, just direction at this point in time. I mean, if there, we could get some direction on whether or not this, appears to be how you want us to present it to the um, voters, or if there's a whole other option you want us to bring to you and we bring it to call an election, that would be helpful for us because we need to start drafting. I think that's the reason we asked for comment and, and from city council was if there was anything we wanted to add or subtract or do, this was the opportunity for everyone to do that. And from what I understand from city council, there hasn't been any suggestion to change the language. Okay. Is that correct? That's what I heard. We have direction. Yeah. You have direction, I'm sh quite sure. 